The best tool to help a beginner learn astronomy is a star wheel or a planisphere. I'm going to teach you how to use a basic star wheel using Uncle Al's hands-on universe star wheel for the northern hemisphere. You can download this from the website that is shown on the screen uh, or those of you in my astronomy class can go to the course website and go to the chapter one uh, content materials under course documents. When you go to the website, you will download something, and it comes in three sheets of paper. The first sheet of paper is this here, which is basically the, uh, the body of the star wheel, and it comes with instructions as well. The second sheet of paper is one of the star wheels with uh, lines on it, grid lines on it, if you want to be precise if you want to plot special things in the sky, such as planets or comets that you might see. And then the sh third sheet of paper, which is the one that I would be most likely to use, would be this one, which is much more basic. It has the constellation names and shapes. And you notice they both have around the outer edge the months and the days. And on here, there are instructions for assembling as well. When you do this, you should definitely use sturdy paper. So here's the finished product. And what I did is I just cut manila file folders. Those were thick enough to be sturdy, yet thin enough to go through the printer without goofing up the printer. Of course, you can also buy different ones from the store. This is one that I like to use as well, the night sky. Uh, this is obviously a lot stronger. It's plastic. One thing that's nice about this one is the sky is not as distorted because it has a north, east, and west side, and then a south and a southeast and southwest side as well. So if you're looking for something that will last longer, I would suggest something like this. And you can find these at uh, a lot of different bookstores or online as well. I'm going to use this one because it's free and if everybody is using the same one when you watch the video, you can get familiar with how to use it. But the instructions that I have for this one are pretty much the same for all star wheels. Although this one just has one side that you look at. And here are the two wheels that are cut out. There's the one that just has the stars and the constellation shapes. And then the one that has the stars, constellation shapes, and grid lines as well. So let's put that one aside for now. Notice the times here on the base go from 6 in the evening through midnight to 6 in the morning. And then notice on the wheel, you've got the different months and days, such that when you put the wheel inside the base, you can line up different dates and times. So if I just arbitrarily stop at some place there, so now you can see this is accurate for 11 o'clock on November 5th. So this is what the sky would look like then. You can use the star wheel to do two different types of things. One is you can pick a specific date and time and then determine what the sky would look like. So let's pick a time. Let's pick June 21st and 11 p.m. So here are the steps. The first thing you want to do is decide whether there is daylight savings time for the date in question. Since I picked June 21st, and since I live in a place that does have daylight savings time in the summer, what I need to do is subtract an hour. Because we, for daylight savings time, we've set our watches ahead, but the sky doesn't move ahead. So when our watch says 11 o'clock, or our cell phone says 11 o'clock, that means the sky thinks it's 10 o'clock. So 11 o'clock June 21st really means 10 o'clock on our star wheel. And then I move the wheel so that June 21st lines up with 10 o'clock. And I can take it out like this. So June 21st, and this is not a super precise instrument. Looks like I've got it lined up fairly well. So here we go, June 21st at 11 o'clock on our watch, which is 10 o'clock according to the sky. So I would see the constellation Scorpius 
in the southern sky, Sagittarius in the southeastern sky, Corvus the Crow in the southwestern sky. Ursa Major, or the Big Dipper, the Big Dipper is part of a larger grouping of stars called Ursa Major, is in high in the western sky. Cassiopeia is in the northern sky, slightly northeastern sky. So that's one thing I can use my star wheel for. Pick a date and time, look at the sky orientation. I can also use the star wheel as a clock. I could look at the sky and then decide what time it is based on the date and the sky orientation. So maybe I'm out winter camping. It's January 15th. And I noticed that Orion is in the southern part of the sky. So here's the constellation Orion. January 15th is set up. So I'm wondering to myself, okay, what time is it when Orion is due south on January 15th? Well, I line up January 15th with the clock there, and I see that it is 10 o'clock. Uh, if I hadn't picked January 15th, and I, if I had picked a time in which there's daylight savings, then I would need to account for that as well. When you go outside and use this, you'll notice that it shows the different horizons. Southern horizon, western horizon, eastern horizon, northern horizon. You want to have it angled so the direction that you're looking is facing down. And in order to help us, we'll get the directions here. Here are the compass directions. And here we have Russell from Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids. So if Russell is facing south, Russell would hold it so south is on the bottom. And at this date, he would see Orion and Lepus in the south. If Russell was facing east, He would hold this so east is facing down, and he would see Hydra above the eastern horizon. If Russell was facing north, he would hold it so it's upside down. And you want to be careful because if you hold it upside down without pinching the body and the wheel together, the wheel will fall out. He would see Draco in the northern sky the very top of the constellation Bootes and Cygnus the Swan. This star wheel is accurate for the middle part of the United States. So those of us who live in the northern part of the United States, this is actually shifted up a little bit too far. In the northern part of the United States, we would not see this part of the sky right here. And in the northern part of the United States, we'd see a little bit more of the northern sky. But it is fairly accurate for the entire United States. Remember, if you have any questions about this, you can go to the website that is on the screen. That will allow you to print out your own star wheel. There are other star wheels at that website as well.